Welcome back to this series of tutorials on microphones. In the previous tutorials, we've looked at what a microphone is, main categories of microphones and how these work, and a selection of important microphone specifications. In this episode, we will meet artist Signally Den in her studio and look at some of the experimental microphones that she has built and uses in her practice. And we'll take one of her microphones out for a spin. Signally Den is a Norwegian artist based in Oslo, who works with relations between place, sensing and sound. Her work spans sound installations, video and performance, next to more documentary forms like sound essays and archives. Through field recording, instrument building and conversations, she approaches place as a dynamic becoming produced by geological, biological and atmospheric processes, as well as social and economic relations. I've asked Liden to join me for this third and last tutorial in this series because of her interesting practice and her work with experimental microphones, which she also builds herself. One of her interests lies with the expansion of the microphone's membrane, which you can for example see in the project Tidal Sense. For this work, commissioned by the Lofoten International Art Festival in 2019, she built a microphone with a 28 meter long membrane that was stretched out through the intertidal zone along the coast. We'll hear more about this microphone later on in the episode. To see more of Signe's work, please visit her website, which I'll link to below this episode. Uh, hi. So I would like to introduce some of my um, contact-based uh, microphones that are waterproof and uh, where I'm also playing with both the housing and uh, the extended membranes. So first, here is a very basic one, where you can also see the piezo elements. It's soldered onto a little uh, housing here, um, where the ground is, is also attached to the metal on the housing, and is sealed with, um, it's uh, something called Tech 7, which is uh, a quite environmental friendly uh, sealing glue and um, and then so it's uh, and in the other hand it's an XLR so this is the base um, and then I've been playing around with um, some different kinds of housing uh, I do a lot of underwater recordings lately I did some uh, tidal pool uh, recordings and uh, I found this sea urchin shell, so that became a housing for for this hydrophone, and here is another one. So, so the shape of the housing is also shaping also the um, the resonance of the microphone um, that is also affecting um, the recordings. So, uh, but one thing that is uh, important to think of when you use this uh, piezo-based microphones is also the impedance um, um, and the use of a, a preamp. Um, because in itself the piezo disc has a high impedance and then it's not really a good match with the recorder, uh, the recorder's in impedance, so then uh, it creates like this uh, high pass that is um, in most cases not wanted. So, and then there are, um, and then it's a great thing is to use um, piezo preamp. 
So it's really a great uh, to use um, piezo preamp that creates also um, that you can also have a bigger range of frequencies responses and also a greater bass response. Um, and uh, one can build one oneself. Um, Sakpuf, for example, has a very good um, uh, manual mm, on his web uh, website and. Uh, but you, it's also possible to buy uh, pre-made ones. So uh, either one then attach these ones, and uh, so here I, for example, have a preamp box where with only this, um, where I can just plug in the different ones when I use a lot of different uh, microphones, for example. So. <clears throat> Um, either you can build in the preamp inside the kind of the housing and uh, this is like two piezo discs and a preamp built into this this housing and sealed so it can record underwater um, but it can you can also use um, just connect the cable into um, box for example with the preamps and then uh, I really appreciate this one where I just connect everything through this and I can easily just change um, and test out various types often also when I build new ones. So um, when it's built into the um, housing it's, it's also quite uh, practical because then you can just directly um, put the XLR into your recorder and you add uh, phantom power uh, that it needs to be phantom powered or like that so that the preamp works um, and then it's plug and play it's it's not very uh, complicated with this box either then I just add uh, XLR uh, cable from the box into the recorder but then I also wanted to talk about like membranes because this is something that I've been very interested in. Um, because, um, yeah, so vibration mics or contact mics, these piezo based mics, they, they record the vibrations within um, objects and structures of a place, for example. And, uh, and it's not really um, the way you listen with your bare ear or body so it's it's already has as a very different um, you you hear the materiality of the object where it's recorded as a part of of the recording and in a way that's um, uh, open up a whole range of, of new ways of thinking recordings where where Kind of what is being recorded and uh, the recording uh, technology merges in a way, so the microphone expands into the object, and um, and then thinking about this that the expansion is like so the membrane of the microphone is expanded, um, also makes it possible to to create, uh, play with this and create new types of, of microphones um, where uh, this, like the membrane, you also create a membrane that is, is um, uh, expanded like this one. It's a long roll of um, linen, very tight woven linen. So it's quite, um, so when it's stretched, it's, it's quite, it creates quite a, like almost like a drum membrane. Now it's quite soft, but this can also be underwater. And here I attached an element uh, quite similar to this one. And, uh, and then it can also uh, record then underwater and above water and also the length of it makes it possible to also record under and above at the same time. Uh, something that I find interesting to test out and, and to work with. So um, the first time I, I worked with this was uh, in a project called the Tile Sense, uh, where I, I uh, spent um, 
or kind of stretched uh, a textile that was a very tight woven hemp textile over the whole tile zone. So, and then there were several of these elements, uh, I think every uh, three meters. Um, and then you could record underwater and above water and and in between where the like the waves were hitting hitting the land for example um so then suddenly the expansion of the of the micro be uh, microphone became uh, really uh huge um but this one is is uh, quite handy to uh, also to transport um unlike the tidal sense microphone so so this you can just roll as a roll <laughs> and then uh, yeah you can you can also um, play around with it and also record above water uh, and um, yeah so so here if I lay it out can see it's about uh, three and a half meter um, and uh, we will do some tests One thing that I find quite interesting with using this one is that uh, uh, the recording really changes with a with a stretch of the canvas. So in a way, you can play it as an instrument, and it uh, the resonance and the different frequencies, how it responds to the different frequencies recorded, it really change with a, a how tight it is or. If I and the placement, of course. Uh, so in this way, it's it's both like a microphone and uh, an instrument in a way at the same time.